sometimes I've really got no choice with people but to just do a stream of consciousness. You know, so that they understand exactly where I'm coming from and all this. I find a lot of the the games that happen here on this particular platform to be incredibly frustrating. Um, you know, I've been pretty transparent about my own frustration. I just, like I said, I, I, I've said this before, I'm going to start sounding like a broken record if I keep saying it, so I'm not going to keep doing that, but it seems to me that a lot of people love to kind of play these games of armchair psychoanalysis of people, and it just... It, they're not trained therapists, so I don't know why they would they would get up here and act like they know what they're doing and tell me things like you need help. I do very strongly feel like the people that are telling me that I'm insane in this particular context are the ones that are actually crazy, though. I'm I'm gonna be honest with you. I mean I don't like if I'm wrong, then explain to me how it is even possible in the remotest, faintest possibility exists for these people that they would actually know me better than myself unless they were psychic, which is literally impossible. So if they're not psychic and they're not me, how could they possibly know me better than I know myself? Especially when, you know, I haven't even been here that long, you know? And then it leads you to the case of, you know, well, maybe they're operating on a, on a, on a set of, uh, rules where that's usually how things are and usually people's motives are easy to pierce and that you know usually i mean i'm so overconfident and conceited and, and confident in my ability to assess what a person's motives are that i believe that this one since i sort so many people must necessarily be motivated by jealousy and it's like nope sorry fucking wrong in the same way two plus two equals five is incorrect i, I mean but but yeah i i, I mean See, the problem with that is that these people are trying to ha trying to be like, well, God damn it, I have a right to my own opinion. And the, the problem is just that what they're calling an opinion is, uh, you know, their determination or their judgment. And they're trying to act like their judgment of my emotions is a fact rather than just their perception of my emotions that are on display. And it's like, sorry, your perception's wrong. It's clouded. It, you know. See, I have the benefit of perfect clarity over my emotions. You're on the outside, so you, at best, are going to get a distorted picture of what it is that I'm feeling. I, however, am the source of those emotions, and so I would know better than anybody outside me could ever possibly know about how I feel, and if it's not the case, then fucking prove it to me! Show me how! I challenge you at this point, because there doesn't seem to me, to, it doesn't seem reasonable to me at all to say that you know how I feel better than I do. And that's just it, you know, that that's what I find so incredibly frustrating about dealing with this, these people. Like, you're not me, so you don't get to tell me how I feel. You know, I'm sorry, but that's just how it goes. Tough shit, deal with it. But, you know, aside from, the, the 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 stream of consciousness frustration that I wanted to get in there. If you're still here with me, I wanted to say that this video was not really going to go into that when I got into this. The, the primary point of this video was to say that I keep getting this unsolicited kind of get a job, 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 cut your hair, <laughs> get a haircut, make yourself more pliable to employers and you know, maybe you'll get the things that you want, you know, get help, get get in gear the way that society, you know, comb your hair, you know, do all the things that we prescribe for you and such, you know, as a society and take all the advice that we give you and do those things and maybe things will get better. And it's like, I didn't ask for your advice. You know, and I'm I'm kind of tired of this unsolicited advice, but I, I'm I'm at the point where it's just like, what you need to understand about my underlying psychology at this point is that it's better to rain. And I truly believe the principles of, you know, paradise lost and what Satan was actually saying. And that, though, you know, the quote, 
here we may reign secure and in in my cho- my choice to reign is worth ambition though in hell better to reign in hell than serve in heaven so i run my own company i am self employed not unemployed i sell through amazon and Frankly, these people that have come in that are all like, I make more money than you, I'm better than you. Uh, No, you're not, because that's a really fucking shitty personality you've got there. (laughs) You know, at least I'm not, at least I'm not flexing in such a way where I'm trying to pretend I'm better than anybody else. Yeah, the market fucking thinks that, but the market's perception of shit doesn't mean fuck all to me. You know, the market's been wrong about so many things before that it doesn't really... Like, sorry, I I don't have faith in it like you do. My faith in the market is shattered. I mean, I may trade on it here and there, but that doesn't mean that I like really believe that it that what it fun- funnels money to is necessarily like the most rational choice that a human being could make. I'm, I don't. I mean, we live in a society where NFL players are paid better than actual teachers. That that clearly is misallocating resources away from education and into 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 entertainment i mean how the 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 invisible hand of the market might may it's not even invisible we can see it and it's clearly insane like sorry like, like drunk off its ass and fucking insane sorry i mean that's the that's the fucking truth about the invisible hand i mean i mean look at it and, and I mean, there's a saying that traders will make amongst themselves because now, like, I literally am, I've been converted to a trader who, (laughs) I've got no choice. I have to interact with that system, whether I think it's insane or not. But, you know, the the truth of the matter about, like, capitalism, markets, and and, and irrationality is that I would look at the upside of irrationality and look at this as opportunity, but it's true what they basically say, which is that the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent, you know? So if you're betting against the crazy, well, those bets can take so long to pay off that you can bank, you, you can end up bankrupt if you bet, you know, the house on them. Like, I, I've got experience in that market at this point, and it's true. You know, that saying happens to be actually literally true. The market is fucking crazy. and you know, it like that doesn't really turn into opportunity though, because if you take advantage of those opportunities, you're gonna end up getting screwed because you, you know, and, and a lot of because it will stay, it'll stay crazy longer than you, <laughs> you know, you can keep your cash flow, you know, flowing in a lot of in a lot of ways. So, uh, market irrationality is opportunity, but those opportunities can take so long to pay off that you could be literally dead by the time they do. You know, and that's, I, I think that's the problem that I have with gold bugs in a way, too. It's like they're always like, you know, all fiat currencies go to zero, but it's like, yeah, maybe over an infinite span of time, but we're not going to be around for eternity. So, you know, if gold doesn't, if gold and silver don't, you know, turn into, you, you know, if, if they don't go to the moon within my lifetime, I won't ever experience the joy behind that. And I don't have kids. I don't plan on having them. So I don't have anything to leave behind for them. I, I'm, not gonna, I'm not planning on leaving shit fuck all behind for children I don't want. And I'm doing whatever it takes to not have. You know, so... But my... um my my clarity in all this and and my shot back at the at all these people and their advice is just though the road as an entrepreneur has been hard and and the income has not been entirely stable though i'm having trouble keeping the store stocked with inventory i'm and that i don't really and that i'm experimenting in a huge way because I have to, I have to, I'm in a a situation where like at times some of the bets that I make don't necessarily pay off and that sucks. Like 
I, it sucks losing money in that kind of way, but usually like I recuperate at least some of the money that I lose, you know, because like what, what ends up happening is that the, the product inventory will still move, but it has to be price slashed to the point in which, you know, the people that want it now suddenly are like, Oh wow, that's a good deal. And go and buy it. You know, like it, that's, that's unfortunately what happens. That means that sometimes you end up having to sell at a loss to attract customers. Like that's just, you know, business, but I mean, businesses, look, the grocery store does the same fucking thing. Like they, they just want people in the fucking front door. So they'll take the loss on certain things like, you know, the containers of this particular container, you know, cause it's got Dr. Pepper. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, if you want to be a jackass, you can always go in and buy like the loss leaders, and then go, you know, shop, and then and then do a comparison of all the local groceries in town, of the various things that you need, and go get them all at the exact right grocery stores, just to, you know, to take advantage of the situation because you know how marketing works in these grocery stores, like. We do, we do to some extent, but we don't do a very like perfect job of of doing it ourselves. Like because there's just there's so many items that you'd have to compare, and you'd have to have like a rolling tally as prices just don't stay, you know. But it would be cool, I think, from like an engineering perspective, to maybe like make an app for the iPhone, like use like Swift to make like an iPhone app. So that people can report the prices of various things to each other so that we can all get a database going, you know, of where things are the cheapest and, and communicate with each other in that kind of way. So that we, when the price gets updated, we can all know about that in the community so that people can make, you know, grocery trips that are designed in that kind of way and, and get all the stuff that they need where it's the cheapest, you know, even if it means taking multiple trips to different grocery stores, that would be an interesting project to put together, you know, on like Swift and like whatever, like, I actually don't know what programming language Android uses for its, so, you know, that, that does bother me. Like, wait, what programming language does Android use? I don't, you know, like, I could look it up. I, you know, now I look stupid, but I... <laughs> Especially because I prefer Android over iOS, obviously. I mean, I've been very vocal about that. <laughs> um, but the thing, the thing, the thing that I wanted to get into in in, in all of this is just my my feelings about all this is just like running my own company. The upside is I can't be fired. When people come in here and they're like, oh, you've just made a controversial take. Well, I'm going to tell all the employers in town what you really think so that you'll be unemployable. It's just like, oh. you know, go, go. What are you waiting for? Go report it. Don't care. Don't need them. You know, <laughs> those turned out to be idle threats, by the way. I've been offered jobs and everything ever, even though these people threatened me multiple times. But yeah. People boast on the internet. They make all kinds of threats against people that try to control them, and it's it, it's always bullshit. Like people, they they're always that way on here. Like they they want to control you, and so they make a threat to get you to submit, and then it turns out to be a paper tiger that is just yeah. That's just how people are, and um, I I just. I, I feel, though, like what I'm doing in this business, even if it's not paid as well as other people, it's still better than the normal course, you know, the and most people don't do what I do. They won't take a risk and go out and start their own company, you know, that they'll take the well-worn path. And I didn't take it. And, you, you know, the, the the truth of the matter is that I feel great about that because Although things are not exactly what I want them to be, and though the path is treacherous in a lot of ways, you know, and that there's adversity on it, the the thing about all of it is just at least I reign in a secure state in such a way that nobody can literally fire me, 
you know, I don't, I don't have set hours. I don't have to be there nine to five. I don't have to deal with any of that shit. I'm just building a company of my own and doing my own thing. And I'm happy about it. And I don't want one of those corporate jobs and the corporate cesspool that is the nine to five world. I just don't like, I, I, I find the routine to be really droll and, you know, nothing really ever shakes it up. There's no novelty to it. And on top of all that, like, It means taking orders from some of the most egotistical and petty little fucks that are that exist in our whole civilization. I mean, I mean, what I mean, what I mean is just people that end up in positions of power in those companies. It often goes to their head, and it's like. You have low level management at a kind of like a fucking grocery store that act like like because they've got employees under them that they can punch down on all of them and abuse them and like they're so much better than their employees and they'll they'll give you all kinds of like petty like little shit like I remember at my old job like I was in pain because I hadn't you know I was not used to being on my feet for you know, an extremely long period of time. And I was leaning over the counter and the guy was like, well, that's just not up to public standards, public standards. You know, these guys, like they, they end up quite arrogant, conceited. They think that they're like, they think that they're really special because of the fact that they've got a position in management, even though it's low level management for, uh, you know, a grocery store that doesn't even bring in that much revenue, like 1% is what they're, they operate off paper thin margins in that industry. It's not all that great. And you have people in management who admittedly have some serious responsibilities in doing what they do, but they, they act like they're so much better than everybody else because of it. And it's just, it's too fucking much. Like it's, infuriating to actually work for those people because they treat you like shit you know and they push you around and they put you through a lot of corporate you know bullshit you know and it's not it's not even it's not even flair it's you know what you're doing sends a bad image it's got bad optics to our potential customers and so we've got to we've got to make you stop leaning over the counter but even though you're in a lot of pain from being on your feet. Screw you. Spend 70 fucking bucks on a good pair of shoes from us as a company. We've got a prescribed set of shoes for the people here. So if you're in such pain, you can wear the shoes that you have to order from like internally on our corporate catalog. And, and <laughs> it, it was, it was a lot of bullshit just corporate bs like the same way that you know you see this corporate propaganda like like facebook trying to call itself a community and that has community policies but in what sense is facebook a community facebook is a top-down authoritarian dictatorship where you know the shareholders and the ceo on the corporate board are able to thunder down community policies on everybody on the, its entire user base, where the users are not allowed to have any input on the actual community policy. This is not a community. You know, it's a, it's the it's a it's a sham that has the veneer of a community that us activists have used because it's where the people have gone to and, and it's replaced the old commons. But it's not a community because in communities decisions are not made by one person you know that or even you know just one board of people that you know are cho are chosen by their ability to buy their way onto the board you know that's not that's not how things happen in the rest of society you know our 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 communities are organized so one man, one vote, you know, and it doesn't matter how rich or poor that man is, what block of life he comes out of. So, and we all contribute to vote 
into power a politician to basically represent us or do the most the best job that they can at representing our views and that's how communities are organized and if there are laws the people don't necessarily write the laws but they elect the people that do and are often invited so that so that they can have a conversation with their elected officials about and a meeting with them about what their concerns are so that you know they can literally take that into consideration especially because they want their vote you know when it comes to you know the uh the election and getting you know getting reelected into office and it it's sort of everything everything bugs me from that you know that vantage point because like what facebook is doing is they're trying to say like like we are a community no you're not you know a community would have delegated you know the authority out to everybody and so we would have been able to come to a decision on the community policies instead of just having them imposed on the users who in my experience most facebook users don't actually consent to the facebook policy they get sucked and thrown into facebook jail frequently